final here at U.S. Quad Ball Cup 2024. I am Clay Dockery, and I am joined by... Soleil Heaney, and I'm very excited to be here in Round Rock, Texas, watching the club finals. We've got uh, the Warriors and Boom Train here. We've got the Warriors in black and Boom Train in white. And we are just about ready for Brooms Up. So we will fill you in on a lot of the backstory and how we got to this point as the game goes on. But we don't want to miss anything. So what are you looking for in the action? Oh, there's so much. These two teams bring so much athleticism and smarts into this game. I love seeing specifically the beating from both teams is just phenomenal. And the passing is just so crisp. Uh, rarely any dropped passes here. So I'm really excited to see who comes out on top. We've got the reigning champions, Warriors. Uh, and I believe um, Boom Train uh made it to the round of four last year and didn't quite make it to the finals so i'm really excited for them as well um we'll see if the warriors can hold their title for two years in a row or if boom train is gonna is on a run this year yes we've seen uh harvard come from uh come back in their rematch from last year and actually take it from utsa it is uh either going to be a second year in a row for warriors or another first time champion if boom train can take it home and we have rooms down, so we are ready to go. We have uh, Tate K here in the middle coming for one of the quad balls, along with um, uh, 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 Katrina Hicks, uh, number 19 for Warriors today. We've and got Kennedy Murphy on boom train carrying the quad ball up pitch, passes to Ali Manzella, back to Kennedy, but intercepted by Ryan Davis. Uh, looking to make that quick pass and then scored by 34. That is Lindsay Morella off the outlet pass from Ryan Davis, the immediate score. That give and go with those two fast USA Team USA players. It was a, a hard transition for Boone Train to get back at them. Yeah, those two are wildly athletic players and they just bring so much speed. Uh, I think that Warriors definitely have a lot of athleticism here, whereas Boom Train plays a little bit more of a smarter, uh, more together game here, whereas Warriors do rely a lot on their athleticism. It's not to say that they're not playing smart as well. So we have Andrews here with a quad ball on the near side, gets it back to Murphy in the center. The give and go between Murphy and Andrews a couple times, and now Andrews toward the hoops, taken down hard. Big stop. That, that big stop from John Jackson does cause a stoppage in play, and we'll have to see if it's going to be our first card of the day. Yeah. Looks like it is a card. And it's not no, on John Jackson. Concert. It is concert on is Ryan Number 27. Davis. One minute. a card for Ryan Davis. One minute in the box or until Boone Drain scores for Ryan Davis. <laughs> We've got uh, Riley Andrews with the quad ball behind the hoops looking to make that drive in. Um, is stopped by several Warriors players, but is able to pass it off, and they manage to get that goal. Was that? I think that was Ben Peachy that actually picked that up and knocked it through for the tying of the game for Boom Train. So we've got John Jackson carrying the quad ball up pitch, uh, waiting. May, waiting to see that opportunity passes to Lindsay Morella at the top. Uh, Boom Train holds dodgeball control here, uh, so it looks like uh, what I see is the Warriors trying to gain that dodgeball control back. Uh, they take a shot, uh, doesn't quite go in, but Lindsay Morella picks it up, shoots it again, again doesn't quite go in, and it turns over to Boom Train. That shot was just barely off from Morella. Good attempt there. That shot's going to go in most of the time from Lindsay Morella. Yeah, beautiful shot, and we know that she can make that, so definitely excited to see her do that and have it go through. Uh, we've got Kennedy Murphy ball carrying passes to Riley Andrews, who gets beat up at the top, but gets it back to Kennedy Murphy in time. Uh, passes to Ben Peachy on the sides, and they're trying to slow down, wait for Riley Andrews to get back in play. Yes. Meanwhile, Warriors defense is stout right now, even with only one dodgeball. Amanda Dallas is beat out, but immediately John Jackson steps up into point defense. So there's no uh, space opened up in this defense for Boone Train to get anything going. No, it looks like they're running kind of a modified 3-1 with Lindsay Morella ready to close out on any passes across, uh, which is a really interesting defense. Uh, Boone Train looking to pass, uh, but gets taken down by 
the Warriors a couple times here, but I do see a hand in the air, so we'll have to find out if there's a call on the play. Possibly another card for the Warriors. So over on the far side, there's a lot of conversation about that contact. And in the course of the conversation here, it's important to note that both teams do need to keep their heads about them, play smart ball, and play within themselves because both have a lot of skills. Um, Boom Train is uh, Boom Train is going to make sure that they can take the hits and. Um, Warriors are going to have to make sure that they give clean legal hits. Yeah, I think that if they're, the teams aren't giving clean legal hits, that could end up being the game changer. It's really hard to stop uh, your. It's really hard to stop an offense when the players are um, down a defender. Uh, but looks like maybe it was just it out of bounds clean. and turned yep. over to the Warriors. Extremely clean. That's exactly what they want. Warriors are super happy with that. Boom train. Uh, just did take the hit, though. No problems with it. No injuries, no penalties. We're just good, clean quad ball. Yeah, definitely needed some rough discussion, but they're ready to go. And we've got John Jackson uh, carrying the ball up. And once again, we have uh, Tay K and Amanda Dallas looking to pinch and get uh, dodgeball control back. Dallas has been playing that deceptive game, trying to sneak up on the dodgeballs. But both of those beaters for Boone Train have not had any interest in that business so far. That's Matt Brown uh, and um, Marissa Weir in at beater for Boone Train, holding control strong. We've got Warriors making some passes up top uh, and on the sides, passes to That's, number... That's uh, Yanko Gavaz. Dinovich over here on the near side. Gonna be Yonko for the rest of the game. And passes back up to John Jackson, then over to Ryan Davis, back up to Yonko. Um, and the Warriors didn't quite connect perfectly, but Boom Train wasn't close enough in that defense. They're playing a little bit compressed in a 2-2 defense on the hoops, um, playing that zone defense. So if you drop the passes high up, it ends up being okay. Um, but this one wasn't passed quite as high up, still managed to maintain control by having John Jackson and Lindsay Morella go in for that. The Warriors are always ready there. That one was just off from John Jackson, just barely off as the beats came in. And uh, the turnover is once again to Boone Train. Really stout defense from both sides so far, but Boone Train has to be happy. We're nearly five minutes into this game, and it's 1-1. Yeah, and... While the Warriors weren't able to score on that possession, they were able to get dodgeball control from what it looks like. Uh, so that's exciting for them. I'm excited to see what Amanda Dallas and Tay K do with that. Um, a bit of a line change here from Boom Train. I see Nathan Digman out there, Shannon Ong, um, Emma Vasquez. This second line for Boom Train, just as good as their first. Let's see what they can do. Yeah, lots of uh, development team. USA players out there, so excited to see what they do. Uh, we've got Emma Vasquez ball carrying and passing uh, to Nathan Digman at the top. Um, Shannon Ung looking to hit Amanda Dallas and succeeds. Um, going in, trying to gain Bludger control back, trying to scare. Uh, they did gain Bludger control back, uh, so that's really good work by Boom Train there. So this is Liam Zock, who had the quad ball, gets it back to Digman at the top. Digman has an opening, gets the shot off at the top hoop. It does not go in, and it looks like it's going to be Warriors ball going back the other direction. Yeah, Boom Train was there for that rebound, but Warriors were there to hit that rebound with the dodgeball. So now we're uh, back to a Warriors quad ball possession. What do you see in the setup for Boom Train over here that the Warriors are going to have to break? Uh, I think they have some really strong point defenders and some really strong beaters. Um, what I'm specifically seeing from that is that oh, the pass across and the shot in so yonko is there to clean up the uh, pass shot and knock it through for the second goal for warriors but now there is a stoppage there is a stoppage i'm wondering if there's a call on the play because there was a beater on warriors who i thought was beat but um they had their fist in the air uh, but I don't think that both Boom Train players had a dodgeball, so it probably was uh, dis uh, deceptive in terms of uh, calling for immunity there. So we'll see what the refs call. So this is um, 
Katrina Hicks and Mo Hagag, who are in at Beater Now for Warriors. Ten, and it looks number like 49, it is a legal immunity blue. claim. That yeah, was so no good. It was an illegal immunity claim, and that did call the goal off. Uh, I believe still leaving the score tied at 10 10. That is unfortunate development for Warriors. Yeah, I was expecting that based on what I saw, but definitely unfortunate for the Warriors. Um, and now it looks like. Uh, Boom Train gets dodgeball possession again because now they have control with both of them. And Nathan Digman has the quad ball, so everything worked out as well as it possibly could there for Boom Train. So Boom Train's in a really good spot. All they need to do is take out one beater, and it looks like they did for a little bit. Um, but unfortunately, oh, oh, that goes did around. Get that pass it did off. not get through. There's a lot of contact on the ground. Uh, Matt Melton tried to get it through, but it does not go in, and Warriors were able to stop on it and stomp it out. Fantastic defense uh, by Mo, and John Jackson, and Ryan Davis on the Warriors. Uh, it took all of them to make sure that uh, Boom Train didn't score, but they were able to succeed. Uh, and now, even with one one dodgeball, one beater, that's pretty impressive while the player's in the box. So we've got John Jackson carrying the ball up, looking to make that pass down low to Ryan Davis. And the, shoots and misses. Yeah, the crossbar knocked it out. The hoop is the biggest defender on that side. One clock, one man cut. The Warrior penalty is killed. Hicks is back in. Yeah, Warriors beat her back in place. So we'll see if they're able to get control back. Uh, right now we've got uh, Boom Train with the quad ball and dodgeball control. Yes. And... Um, they are bringing the entire team up, so it looks like they are going to try to use that dodgeball control in this possession to uh, make a dent in this Warriors stout defense. Here is the pass in, but instead Ryan Davis is able to collect it, and once again it's in the hands of John Jackson for another offensive possession. But Boom Train is able to keep both dodgeballs and set their defense immediately. Yeah, that was a very good stuff by Yanko uh at the top there otherwise that defense was fully penetrated so it's cool to see that uh we've got john jackson carrying the quad ball up doesn't have that dodgeball support with him though uh lindsey morella has the quad ball now uh and we've got boom train still maintains two dodgeball possession um but we've got mo in looking to help that there's an exchange in the beater game, and both the dodgeballs go rolling, and the quad ball goes all the way behind the hoops. Yanko gets it into Morella. The, the beat is missed, and the quad ball goes back up to the top, but it looks as though there is another foul in the Warriors' dodgeball game. Yeah, uh, right now, it doesn't look like either of the Warriors players have possession of that dodgeball, but we'll see if one of their beaters gets to teleport over to the dodgeball on the side, because... Uh, if they do, that would be very useful because right now, if Boom Train gets a turnover, uh, they're going to have a fast break, no dodgeball scenario, which uh, with the Warriors could still be hard to score on, but the Boom Train is just as athletic, just as fast, so we'll have to see if they're able to uh, take advantage. And I can say for everyone who's been listening that we have upgraded our teleporter to an Excelsior class. Uh... It does there. look like that beater is able to teleport to the sideline. There it is. Excelsior class in action, and we're back. So now Warriors have one dodgeball uh, and the quad ball looking to maintain, looking to get control back, um, but doesn't quite look like oh, there is succeeded. Oh, a lot of contact for Mohagog, but it's called good. And that may be a gain of control. No, not enough. Uh, Hagag was beat, so was unable to do it, but the goal is good. Warriors are finally able to get a second goal out of that possession. Yeah, Ryan Shu did uh, lose his dodgeball uh, on Boom Train, but was able to be fast enough to get it back. Uh, so now we've got uh, the the Boom Train carrying the quad ball up pitch by Josh Johnson. Uh, passes to Kennedy Murphy at the top. I love seeing Kennedy as a ball carrier. A great distributor, sees passes, isn't afraid to make them. Um, and they still maintain dodgeball control. We've got the Warriors again in this modified 2-2 defense. Uh, they always have a player ready to step. Oh, there is a stoppage now again. And conversation being had between the referees. 
Did you see what may have happened this time? I didn't. I'm curious. It could be a delay of game stalling call. They were being quite slow here, but I am not sure. Some people call it slow. I call it being vintage. Yeah. Stalling didn't always used to be a call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, still not sure exactly what's happening. Haven't heard any word from the referees. We'll surely get an update extremely soon. And here we come with the update. It is a yellow card. So it is now a yellow card on Katrina Hicks for being for playing after being beat. It is another minute in the box for Hicks. It is only one blue card and one yellow card, which means that they do not stack against each other. The blue card doesn't count for that. Just one yellow card counting towards potential ejection at three. So we've got Boom Train carrying the quad ball up, uh, still maintain control, which makes sense because Warriors only have one beater in play. Um, pass backs to Emma Vasquez at the bottom uh, and then pass back up top. They're really looking to shift that defense, but this modified 2-2 from the Warriors uh, really works well to not have that shift. Uh, and it looks like there is no goal. Number yeah. 15, uh, Josh Johnson shoots, and I guess it doesn't quite go in. I couldn't quite see from my angle, but that's what the referees are calling. Yeah, it was, I assume, a slightly to the left, but it was very close. Josh Johnson usually makes that shot, um, but it'll even out. And it'll even out in favor of these shooters by the end of the game, I think. Uh, and we've got John Jackson carrying the quad ball up, protected by a, a beater, Tate K, who has a dodgeball. Uh, and we're very close to having Katrina Fernandez Hicks get back into play and tag up. Uh, so that penalty has been served, uh, and it looks like she is ready to sub. Uh, so we've still got John Jackson with the ball. Uh, passes deep to Ryan Davis. Uh, All the way into the back. Can't quite see through a bunch of players who's back there. I, but it's picked out of the air by Kennedy Murphy. I think that, oh, was, that was a goal. It was a goal that went through. It was a goal that went through. So uh, 30 to 10. Or thir yeah, 30 to 10. Warriors in the lead. Josh Johnson with the quad ball now being uh, aggressively uh, defended by Tate K. Pushes it across, and I think it goes out of bounds on the far side of the field. Yeah, there's a couple balls out of bounds. I think that. There was a dodgeball and a quad ball. Um, not sure if there was a referee who accidentally got hit by a dodgeball in that play. That's what it looked like from my end, but hard to say. I don't necessarily have as good of an angle as you guys do watching at home. The, the referees are part of the field, and some of us are a, a large part of the field. So uh, shout out to all of our referees out there and all of our volunteers across uh, U.S. Quad Ball. We appreciate all that you do. We appreciate all the time and effort and energy, energy that you put into the sport. We absolutely cannot do it without you. And you are amazing. Yeah, for sure. I love how many volunteers come together to make this tournament happen. It's the biggest event of the year, and it's so great to see. Uh, so it looks like Warriors are getting quad ball possession on the sidelines, uh, inbounding, and we see Christian Barnes with the dodgeball uh, looking to hit Channon, but doesn't, or not Channon, I can't quite see that number, but doesn't quite succeed. Um, Tate K beats out Kennedy Murphy at the top, uh, and now Ryan Davis has the quad ball, passes to John Jackson. Um, I'm seeing a 2-2 defense from Boom Train uh, with Christian Barnes looking to get that control back. Uh, lots is, of passes up top. Yeah, they love to pass up top. They like to make uh, they like to make the defense make decisions. That's the Warriors thing. They have the athleticism. They have the crisp passes. The defense has to commit, and the Warriors usually put it home. But right now, it's only 30-10. And we are more than 12 minutes into this game. Well, the defense is committing. It seems like the defense is committing to things that are effective for the most part. So uh, despite the Warriors' athleticisms and ability, you have to commit and you have to make the right decision. And that's exactly what Boom Train is doing. Yeah, Boom Train and Warriors putting on a de defensive clinic so far in this championship match. Got Riley Andrews with the quad ball uh, looking to make some fakes, looking to see uh, their pass options over and passes to Liam Zock, uh, then passes down low to uh, 23 Ben Peachy, uh, but who gets beat out but manages to get the quad ball back. Lots of stuff happening 
uh, on the boom train end, but they're not quite able to make it to the hoops. Yeah, um, the but Warriors they... defense, very stout and very stout with only one dodgeball. And Christian Barnes, they have still not been able to make anything happen with getting that possession, but they are holding the attention of Matt Brown. Uh, I'm hearing a nun call, and then I saw a shot, which is tough. If if I hear that a team has no dodgeballs, I'm going to drive in and get my hand through that hoop. But I think sometimes with the Warriors, it's hard. They're big hitters, and you can't always drive through the uh, chasers and keeper like you can with other teams. Michael Yada Parada, the head coach of the Warriors, and now Yada looking um, for another championship this season. Um, who obtained he obtained the triple crown last summer and has not lost a game of quad, quad ball in any league since December of 2022. That's a crazy stat. I had no idea about that one. Uh, oh, and the... was able to score through that tall hoop. Uh, so great shot by the Warriors, putting the score to 40 10 for the Warriors. Uh, Boom Train is going to have to put up some goals on Warriors. Otherwise, it seems like Warriors are going to come away with it. Uh, Boom train uh, is knocked down, so there's a lot of physical contact on the far side. There is a stoppage. We'll have to see what happens here. Right now, Yada has the quad ball, and the oh, broom God, is broken. We're we're stopped contact. for contact. an equipment malfunction. Broom, broom, quarter broom. Yeah. They got it. Uh, so it looks like uh, they did need to replace the broom on that hit there, and I. Uh, see a player coming over. Yeah, that's Taylor Crawford with the Warriors, who is in the box, and that does lead to a goal, and that gets Crawford out of the box. But the second goal for Boom Train is on the board. It's now forty to twenty. So I guess Boom Train, listen, they knew they had to put those goals up, and they started to. Uh, that worked out really well for them. Although we'll have to, I have to say that both goals that Boom Train was able to score have been on penalties. So I do think Warriors need to play a little cleaner, um, a little more crisp, make sure that they're not getting any cards because otherwise, that's when Boom Train is scoring. Yes, Boom Train capitalizing on penalties. Warriors so far with four penalties in the game. Um, Boom Train with none. Beautiful bludger block from Yada, but then ends up getting beat by the other leader. Uh, Boom Train picks up the quad ball and is looking to drive uh, on a no bludger scenario. Riley Andrews all the way. Riley Andrews scores. And there's another stoppage. Riley Andrews looked like they went close, uh, coast to coast there. Uh, he went close to coast to coast on that score, but it has not been confirmed yet. Yeah, goal hasn't been confirmed, but if he did, uh, that would have been crazy. That's a very, very far run to make and able to score through the Warriors, who, like we said, are a physical team. The goal is good. The goal is good. Yellow Confirm. card, legal contact, high contact, number 11. Penalty negation by the goal. That is a yellow card on Yada. Um, this one is in the course of the, uh, the goal does negate the foul after the penalty time, not the foul itself. But that does mean that uh, the Warriors continue to pick up too many fouls in the game. Yeah, foul and uh, Boom Train was still able to score on that one. So shout out to Riley Andrews for that really quick uh, fast break scenario on the no dodgeball situation. Uh, now Warriors have possession of the quad ball and they're uh, walking up pitch looking, waiting to make that defense commit. Oh, uh, Ryan Davis with the shot, and it is cleaned up behind the hoops by Taylor Crawford. But there is another stoppage. There's another stoppage. Not sure if that goal is good. Uh, hasn't been confirmed by the referees yet, so we'll have to find out if there was maybe a beat before call or something that we couldn't quite see over here from the sidelines, but the referees had a better angle on. Yeah, there's definitely a few people holding things that are between us and those hoops. In fact, I'm... Um, I need to ask, I'm going to ask him to do call. Yeah, so uh, I can't tell if that goal was good or not. Uh, I guess not because there was no goal. So right now the score is 52 34 Warriors. Um, and we have Boom Train looking to score and scored by Ali Manzella, who's at the hoops, putting the score up to 50 to 40. Um, for the Warriors, but Boom Train coming back, uh, it was 
15 to 20 or 50 to 20 at one point. So really great to see they've put up two goals straight uh, while stopping the Warriors. Um, interested to see if they will be able to uh, come back and tie up the game here. Uh, we've got uh, Tad Walters in beating now, uh, and it looks like another beater. Um, can't quite, I believe Marissa Weir. Uh, yeah, that's Marissa Weir, number 27, the second beater in for Boone Train. Mo Hagog making some beats, making things happen. Gets Tad. Tad, uh, Tad and Mo, Mo Hagog with a steal from Tad. Um, a lot of physical contact between the two of them. This has to be what the call is about. Yeah, very physical. Both of these players, uh, great strips from both of them, great catches. Uh, very, very, very good beaters. Uh, clearly, Tad's beating is better than his biscuits. Um, so we are here waiting to see what the ref call is uh, going to be. Looks like it is a no goal. Yeah, that was that was a that was a lot of contact, but it looked clean to me. Uh, Tad was off room, so maybe he was sent back to hoops. Um, and so looks like Warriors were able to get um, passes into the back corner. Back. Oh, that that pass is knocked out of the air by Liam Zop. And that is back to Boom Train. Uh, Boom Train gets both dodgeballs and the quad ball. Tad looking to make a fast break scenario happen. Um, and all the way to the hoop and through from Josh Johnson. Uh, hard to say if that goal was good. We have some ARs calling the goal good. Uh, we have the HR calling the goal off. So we'll have to find out what the final consensus is from all of the referees here. And the game right now. Very, very, very close. The crowd definitely with an opinion, but let's see what the referees have to say. Yeah, we'll have to find out. If this goal is good, that will tie it up. Otherwise, Warriors still maintain that 10-point lead. Um, I think that the line change the energy from Boom Train, and that goal was called good. Uh, so tied up, the score is 50-50. Uh, I think the crowd has an opinion, um, and maybe they're looking to see another first-time champs uh, here. So looks like looks looks like Boom Train is able to get uh dodgeball control, maintain that. Uh and Warriors have quad ball possession, looking to pass deep, but intercepted by Boom Train. And it's running back the other way again. Uh Tad Walters Josh able to Johnson again. Josh Johnson in. I got to say, this has all been Tad Walters uh, creating those no dodgeball opportunities for Josh Johnson to drive in and score on the Warriors, who aren't able to step up quite fast enough uh, once they realize that their beater doesn't have that dodgeball. It's a team game, right? And the team game for this came down to that shift change when, um, when they shifted to the current beater pair that's out there. That pair has shifted the complexion of this game and made it where they're, the Warriors' defense, which was stopping everything, is a little bit back on their heels. Yeah, Todd Walter has a very, very aggressive beating style. Um, and if if his athleticism wasn't there, um, he wouldn't be able to pull it off. But crazy, crazy athleticism, able to uh, just fly in, create no dodgeball opportunities. It's so impressive. And also... Salt on the wounds, Mohagog coming to the box. Uh, I actually believe it is Tad Walters. Oh, so, uh, uh, it showed it to Mo, showed it to Mo, but yeah, Tad is coming in. <laughs> All right, so it is Tad. Tad coming to the box, which is, uh, I guess, after the goal? Because not, they did call it good. They did call the goal good, but maybe we'll have to find out uh, whether or not this card affects that. Um, not 100% sure. Uh, we'll have to wait for referee confirmation uh, to find out yep, if I, that goal was good. I heard the referee say to uh, to Josh Johnson, it was after. So the goal was good. I guess that foul occurred afterwards. Oh, there was also a penalty on Mohagog, but penalty was negated by the goal. So two yellow cards on the play, one for each beater in that that kerfuffle at the bottom there. Uh, like we said, super aggressive beating from Todd Walters to create those uh, do no dodgeball opportunities. But unfortunately, sometimes it does lead to some cards when you're that aggressive. All right. So now 
Warriors, the game has changed within the last three minutes. Warriors had a four-goal lead, and now they're down by one. Yeah, really tough for the Warriors. Hopefully they're able to get their head in the game uh, and get back into it. Uh, we're seeing them run. They, we see them miss two shots in a row there. Mo is able to save it, not until the reset is used, but it does get back into the hands of Davis. <laughs> Uh, what I did see from the Warriors there was what we refer to as a 1.5, where uh, one beater on their team stands with uh, two dodgeballs, and one beater goes in to mess with that person with the dodgeball, especially while Tad is in the box. That's going to be pretty effective there. Um, so we've got Warriors with the quad ball. Uh, number three, Miguel Esparza, um, another great player. And looking to, again, make those boom train defense commit. Uh, we've got number two. Taylor Crawford. Taylor Crawford with the claw ball. There's a large hit on the far side of the field. Player down. Taylor Crawford gets the shot off. But there is just bedlam in the crowd right now. Yeah, call on the play. Not sure what's happening. Um, not sure what the crowd's going on about. Clearly, it happened on the other side, far away from us commentators. Yeah, I was watching the players in the in the center here, where Taylor Crawford gets a nice pass in to Miguel Esparza, and I thought that the Warriors were just about to put a goal on the board right before the 20 minute mark. Here, we're 19:10, but no instead, goal! there's on something the happening here. Yes, five. Um, it does look like there's going to be a call on the play, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. It looks potentially like it's going to be a back to hoops on Tad Walters. Oh, just back to hoops. Uh, so I guess no call on the play. I'm surprised they didn't let advantage play out there because Warriors did maintain possession. Um, hopefully this doesn't hurt their ability to score. As far as it gets it out, right as the beat comes in, back to Crawford. Yeah, back to Crawford. Crawford uh, resetting up that half-court defense, pulling the quad ball behind the hoops. This can be super effective. Um, and then shifting that quad ball back up to the top uh, to Miguel. Miguel goes around, has the, sh has the pass off, but it is intercepted by Johnson. And now, with 30 seconds left until the 20-minute break, Boom Train wants to hold for last shot and try to get uh, dodgeball possession back. Yeah, I think Boom Train is going to work really hard to get dodgeball possession before the flag runner goes out. They're going to want to uh, be able to put both dodgeballs on the seeker, is my guess, especially with a game this close. Especially with a game this close and world class seeker Ryan Davis. And while they were able to uh, beat the beater they were not able to get that dodgeball control back and they also were not quite able to hold for last possession just milliseconds before the countdown ends warriors wind up with one last possession themselves crazy and they're gonna want to be really conservative with these dodgeballs um they're gonna probably keep both of them as far up as they can, which that's what they're doing. They're running that 1.5 that I talked about earlier, uh, trying to create opportunities without having to use their dodgeball. Um, and we've got passing down low to DME, uh, passing back and forth. And yeah. DME, DME miss beat, DME with space. DME trying to go around, gets it back to Lindsay. Lindsay Morella makes a move. Lindsay Morella gets it in. It's covered up right at the hoop spike. It was covered up right at the hoops by, I think, Kennedy Murphy. Yeah, Kennedy Murphy was able to hop right on that quad ball at the bottom. But Molly Potter was able to save it at least momentarily for Warriors. But I'm not sure, as it got kicked down the pitch, if that may have meant that uh, Warriors lost possession and it ends the period. I we'll think they probably see. did lose possession because Kennedy Murphy did hold on to that ball. Uh, from my eyes... Uh, I, AR, I think that that should have been the end of that 20 minute possession. Um, and it should actually be Kennedy Murphy down there with the quad ball at the end, but hard to say what the refs are going to call here. Um, yeah, tight. and it looks like there might even be a card, card on the number play. eight playing on after beats. It is take cool. K with that is intermission. Yes. Where's the top of playing after beats? Uh, it's the yellow card. So it's turnover. Box. 
That's going to be... And also... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. It's also the 20-minute okay, intermission. Our, that's going to be really tough eyes. for the Warriors. No, no, it's from the side. Uh, it was 50, 50. Thank runner you, Dawson. Pitch. That's going to mean... Go. Intermission is called! Cool. Intermission! Has, um, one less uh, beater with them to try to make that opportunity happen. And that one less beater being Tate K, who is, again, as are most of the players on both teams, and a world-class player. Yeah. Uh, Team USA player, like a lot of the Warriors, yeah. and it, like Matt Brown on yeah. Boom Train. Yeah. Boom Train, current Team USA roster, only Matt Brown. Previous Team USA off uh, rosters, Nathan Digman. There, there's a few of them. but There's quite a yeah. few of them, and also some development team players. Yeah. I know I had the chance to play against the development team uh, la uh, summer 2022. So as we are here at the 20 minute break, I wanted to um, give a little bit of an advertisement for something that is going to be going on in May. Um, uh, one of our groups of five ball players out there is putting on Space Jam Fantasy, and they have graciously sponsored an ad on our USQ live stream. Uh, the tournament is going to be on May 25th, which is a Saturday. It is going to be in Castlebury, Florida. And that is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, they are going to post a link to sign up down in the comments. And we encourage you all, anybody who can do it, get down there. We encourage anybody who wants to play quad ball to do so. There will be quad ball tournaments throughout the summer. Uh, keep getting out there. Keep playing. Get together with friends. Bring in new people who have never played before. The way we get this sport to keep on playing is to get people to play it. Yeah, fantasy tournaments are a great way to try the sport, and I know that there's fantasy tournaments happening across the U.S. all summer, so make sure to check out whatever you can. Um, and while we're in this 20-minute intermission, I want to talk a little bit about the road to how the Warriors and Boom Train got here. So they both went 3-0 and on day one, uh, placing first in their pool overall. Uh, very clear hot one teams here um and then in quarters we had warriors play lost boys uh they won 200 to 50 uh and boom train played uh twin cities quad ball club winning 145 to 60 uh and then in semis we had warriors playing heat again a very clear win here 185 to 80 um whereas the semis for boom train were a little less close 145 to 100 against bosney uh who is another very good team um so uh, well, maybe Warriors had a little bit of an easier path based on scores. It looks like Boon Train is able to uh, hold their own and maybe just had a little bit of a harder bracket. Yes. And in case you've forgotten, this is Warriors trying to go back to back. And while there have been two five time champions in quad ball, those two five time champions were both college teams. The cavalry team has three championships. No other club team has more than one. Uh, and so Warriors want that second star, and they're looking to get it here. The Seekers then are going to come into the game. Looks like it's going to be Matt Melton for... It's going to be Matt Melton for Boom Train, and it's going to be Ryan Davis for Warriors. Unsurprising here. Both very good Seekers. Um, have unfortunately had them seek against me, and it's no fun to go against them. One, and so we do have the Seekers released, uh, and it looks like Dodgeballs are uh, focusing quite a bit on um, the Seekers looking to try to pull ahead because that is worth three goals. Uh, right now, Boom Train does have the quad ball. Ali Manzel is passing it off down low um, and is... Looks like Boom Train still able to maintain possession of that quad ball, looking to um, make a cut, make a pass. Um, but it's going to be really hard against the athleticism of Boom Train. Uh, we're seeing some picks, we're seeing some switches around, um, but still no attempt to score on those hoops. Um, getting wrapped up. Oh, that was an immediate, the, oh, the first attempt from Ryan Davis on Porter Marsh. The very first attempt that they had, they come away with the flag in their hand. Is it going to be an instant catch? We'll have to see. They're a crazy seeker, so I wouldn't be surprised if this catch is good. I don't think they have a lot of catches called off. They're a very clean seeker, uh, so really interested to see how the call for this goes. Oh, 
The catch is confirmed. It is good. And that puts the Warriors back in the lead. They don't care that they were down a beater. They did not have Tate K. They don't care that there were two dodgeballs and a zone, a complete bubble around the flag runner. They don't care that it was Porter Marsh who held off everyone. Porter, yeah, yes. A wrong Porter, but same Porter thing. Burcham, yes. Porter Burcham, very good uh, flag runner. Uh, so right now, Boom Train does have the quad ball. If they can score, then they'll only be down by 10 points. But if they're they able to score. Yes. So actually down by 15, uh, the flag runner is worth three and a half goals uh, is how it works. Uh, so that's 35 points. We have Warriors with the quad ball, and the score right now is 85 to 70. Lindsay Morella flying down pitch, uh, looking to not get contacted. Um, and but looks like there's going to be a card on the play. My guess is that's going to be on Riley Andrews, who accidentally made uh, contact with Lindsay Morello while he was trying to pick up that quad ball. Yeah, so, Riley Andrews on the line, coming please. directly Thank over you. to the box here. But so, as I was saying, uh, was um, juice, yes, on Bertram, who had legal card, legal contact, legal day, trip, 31. including Ryan Davis Remote. for a very long time in the last match, goes down immediately. Yeah, Ryan must have been on their A game. Porter Bertram roughed up. Uh, was a flag runner at World Cup this summer, so I know, uh, I know he's a very capable flag runner. That's pretty unfortunate, but Ryan Davis knows when to uh, pull out their full effort, and now is the time in the college or club finals. <laughs> yes. So, Josh Johnson and Yonko were here in the center of the field right before oh, the I stoppage of play. It you looks know, like a blue is possibly it. coming out. Yeah, I'm interested Go, to see what call on the play yellow. is Go. happening. Blue card, illegal kind of immunity, number 49 Warriors. Uh, so that's going to be a blue card for Mohagog for a uh, legal claim of immunity here. Um, so now each team has a player in the box, but in my opinion, it's a lot more, it's a lot rougher to have a beater in the box than it is to have a quad ball player in the box, whether that's a keeper or a chaser. Um, that's just my experience. Uh, right now, Warriors have the quad ball, um, as always, uh, taking a slow half court, looking to get Boom Train uh, to make a mistake on their defense. Lindsay Morella passes up to Ryan Davis. Um, Ryan Davis, Dianco here on the near side, passes back behind to Molly Potter. Molly Potter goes up top and it's blocked. Yeah, Molly Potter is a shooter. Uh, I played with her last year and I know that that is her strength. So. It's really unfortunate that that was blocked because it was likely going through that hoop. Oh, yeah, it was definitely on target. And Molly Potter has returned returned to Warriors after a year away on Slice and is a great weapon for this Warriors team. So right now we've got Josh Johnson pack passing to Liam Zock, uh, who is looking to work with their beater to create a no-dodgeball opportunity, it looks like, uh, but passes back up. Uh, to Josh Johnson. Uh, slow game here. It's still 85-70. Boom Train playing methodically. Both teams know if they play their game the rest of the way out, they can win the championship. Yeah, and that's exactly and what Boom Train is doing. Making the game a lot closer with 80-85, uh, essentially tied at this point, um, with the set score being 120. Amazing. This game is anybody's game. We're four goals away, 80-80. Just a, a fantastic championship match here with two amazing teams. A real nail-biter. Um, I really am excited to see what both of these teams do, especially Boom Train finally able to put some goals up without Tad Walters on pitch. So uh, that's a really good sign for them. And we've got Molly Potter down low, passing it uh, to Lindsay Morella at the top. Uh, passing it back up to Ryan Davis. Um, all around, all four quad ball players have touched that quad ball while they're waiting. Um, and so Ryan Davis, faking it a little bit, passes to John Jackson. I got to say the Josh, Johns, Josh Johnson, John Jackson, uh, both of them making it challenging for me to get my J's straight. At least Jackson Johnson is not out here too right now. That would be way too confusing. And that is a reset. I think it might have. I think it might have been saved even before the reset used by John Jackson. And so uh, the ball is now reset used. But oh, I think it went across both. Yes, it did. It's both restrictor lines. Both re both resets used. 
and it's a turnover. Yeah, unfortunately, Amanda Dallas running back to the hoops after getting beat accidentally kicked that quad ball across their keeper zone line. If they hadn't done that, I don't think that quad ball would have passed, but that's just really unfortunate from her part uh, because that does mean a quad ball turnover to Boom Train. No uh, and it also looks like Boom Train has dodgeball control right now uh, because I do see a okay, fist up from Take K, which means that uh, he is claiming immunity and is looking to pick up that third dodgeball. Conversation happening between Amanda Dallas and the ref. And now the ref's having the same conversation. Just to confirm, make sure everything is right. We want to we wanna have a clean game. We want to make sure that all the calls are good. And now... And I know this ref crew, they're a very capable ref crew, but they're going to want to talk to each other a lot because they know those rules. Resumption has occurred. Uh, so we've got Boom Train with the ball. Um, again, Riley Andrews, great, great yeah. player here. And this is uh, Andrews pushed it off to Zock. Zock is now taking the round to the outside, has um, Ryan Sue in front. Ryan Shue in front. Uh, back to Riley Andrews, uh, makes a fake, is able to get it off, oh, gives that... it to Ali Manzella, who, uh, great bucket, I love that positioning, and Ali Manzella is one of those development Team USA players that I played against in 2022, and that is what she is best at. Um, and now we've got, uh, Warriors at 85, and, uh, Boom Train, er, at 90, so... Warriors trying to look to uh, tie it back up, make themselves be part of this game still. Uh, Ryan Davis shoots, does not score. And it goes across the restrictor lines again. A lot of contact again over by the hoops. But it looks like that's cleaned up. Looks like there's no call on the plate. It's just going to be a quad ball turnover. Um, and so Boom Train does get possession of that quad ball, but we see that Riley Andrews is right beside Tate K, who does have a dodgeball, uh, so does look to pass it back, slow that uh, offense down. They're not going to try to drive in on Tate K, a very, very capable beater. Um, Josh Johnson here now looking for an opening. Nathan Digman coming back in along with Emma Vasquez. So... Fresher legs coming back in for Boone Train as they look to put things away as only a few goals before they would hit set score. Yeah, it looks like they're um, passing back and forth um, at the top, looking to uh, take a page out of Warriors' book and make sure that they mess up. Uh, Nathan Digman tries to pass to Ali Manzella, but unfortunately the pass sails over her head. Uh, not her fault. She does have very good hops, long arms, didn't work out. Um, so now we're uh, back to Warriors quad ball possession. Yes, Warriors quad ball possession, looking to tie it back up at nines with 120 as the set score. Um, you know, with the trailing five, we'll just uh, keep it in our heads, but not in our hearts. Yeah, so... Uh, now we have Warriors slowly walking it up pitch, um, hoping that they can pull that uh, defense over to one side. Christian Barnes right in the middle of things again, trying to disrupt, trying to get one of those dodgeballs as both of the dodgeballs are now again in the possession of Boone Train. It's Ashra and it's Ashra and Sayawik. With the with the Boone Train dodgeballs. Oh, Taylor Crawford. Taylor Crawford, it looks good, but it does not get called through. And it's the other way with Nathan Digman now. I think that it was beat before, and oh, that okay. was a beautiful shot. Uh, so now Nathan Digman bringing the ball up, uh, looking to drive in. Passes to Emma Vasquez down low, who unfortunately fumbles that ball. But I'm not sure. Maybe there was a possible there's a call on that play. Uh, Emma Vasquez did go down pretty hard there, but uh, from my angle, it looked clean, but the refs have a much better angle than I do on pitch. So, as we wait on the refs to adjudicate this, what do you think that Warriors should do to try to get this elusive goal? I think the Warriors need to start working together as a team more. I'm not hearing them talking, um, and it looks like they're playing with slightly different lineups than they were at the start. Uh, we're seeing uh, different beater pairs. We're seeing different uh, chaser lines. Uh, hadn't seen Molly Potter and Lindsay Morella play together quite as much. Um, so 
I know that they have played together. They did play at Placer Valley Qualifiers, uh, which is where my team attended, and they did play together quite a bit there, but they haven't had this game as much, so I'm interested to see um, if they're able to pull it together, get that chemistry going. All right, we're about ready to resume. It looks like everything is called clean, and it will be Warriors squad ball going up the field. John Jackson directing the offense. It's been a dry spell since the flag catch. Um, they're really looking to score, but this 2-2 defense from Boom Train is really hard to break. They're very strong at what they do, and their beaters are able to maintain two dodgeball possession. If Warriors can get back that second dodgeball, they're going to do a lot better, um, both on defense and on offense. Yeah. Lindsay Morella back to Molly Potter in the back corner and all the way across. That one goes through from from Taylor Crawford. There's no doubt about it this time. We're once again tied. I feel like I spoke too soon. I said they hadn't played together, and then that was just a beautiful connection by them and Taylor Crawford. So uh, they were able to get that chemistry back that I saw at Placer Valley, and now we've got Nathan Digman carrying the ball up, and now the score is 95-90. Uh, uh, so essentially a tie game. Uh, both teams need three goals to win. Uh, now it's Boone Train spreading things out with long passes. And then there's a collision on the far side. Big time tackle on Digman from Taylor Crawford. Yeah, as well as getting beat out. So that gives Warriors possession again. Warriors possession. And now the drive down the field. Taylor Crawford is wrapped. Taylor Crawford gets out of it. Taylor Crawford passes out to John Jackson and then to Lindsey Morella. Lindsey Morella goes around three people and puts it through the tall hoop. What a juke by Lindsey Morella. That was beautiful. There was a flag on the play. My guess is it's going to be net contact for Nathan Digman. That contact did look a little bit high, but oh, so wow, was that Thank a beautiful you. goal by Lindsey. Go. Yeah, Lindsey Morella just with, with all of the moves there. So it's uh, not Digman, on Digman. Number... It is going to be on Saw. Yellow card, oh. 29. Oh, High no, contact, goal is good. Penalty um, time, I get it by the goal. Over. Yellow card number three. Oh, both of them. One minute. Contact from behind. Ah, so it looks like they did both get a card, um, but one happened uh, before the other, which means Nathan Digman's penalty time is negated by the goal, while Zox is not. Yes, so that will mean a minute in the box or until Warriors score again on the uh, Zox penalty, but at least they're not down two players. Yeah, so the score is 105 to 90 for the Warriors. Uh, Warriors need two goals to win. Boom Train needs three. Uh, and it's going to be a lot harder while they have a player in the box. Uh, so that goal was good. So Nathan Digman will have to um, get that quad ball back to be live. Looks like he's going nice and slow, looking to give uh, his team time to set up on offense. And now we'll probably also go as slow as they can in order to use as much of Zox time as possible. Clearly in the new uh, way the game is running, it will be difficult to, uh, it will be difficult to spend the entire time. But if anyone can do it, it's these crisp passes of the Boom Train team. Yeah, Warriors are gonna wanna play a higher defense than they have been um, to try to make uh, Boom Train not use up the penalty time, but doesn't look like they're playing that high defense. So yeah, maybe but... they're just not, they're not too worried about having the full boom train against them. Yeah, they're they're content to keep things as they are, I assume, from the way they're playing. Um, and boom train is absolutely trying to kill the penalty. Yeah, although boom train is driving in. Oh, they did drive in. Missed. Had an opportunity. They get the shorthanded goal. Go. Great rebound by Boom Train. Um, sometimes when you think that goal went in, you don't continue it, but they really play it until the whistle, and that's what matters. Uh, so now we've got John Jackson. John Jackson snipe beat before that pass. I think that pass. I think that's going to be a turnover to Boom Train. I think I so too. I think that John John Jackson was beat before, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Look to see what the ref call is here. That beat was a great beat coming in just in the nick of time. And so that was no goal, which makes the score 105 for Warriors, 100 for Boom Train. Super tight game here. Both teams need two goals to win. And we've got uh, keeper at Riley Andrews looking to drive in, um, but then Tay K is able to get back on defense. So Riley uh, pulls back. It's 
the entire Boone Train team wants this goal right here. Warriors setting their defense. Only one dodgeball in the game, but it is in the hands of Tate K. Point defender from Taylor Crawford. It goes to the back. It's not through. It's blocked. It's into the hands of John Jackson. That's a stop that the Warriors needed. Great block by Lindsey Morella on the hoops there. Very important. Um, when you're playing that 3-1 zone, which is where you have one player on each hoop, so you've got to be in charge of your hoop, and that's exactly what Lindsay did. Um, so we do have John Jackson carrying the quad ball back on pitch. Uh, Warriors with possession, um, which does give them a mild advantage here, so they need to score two more to win. John Jackson pulls the ball back to Lindsay Morella at the top. Morella waits for an opportunity as all of the other dodgeballs run around. Pass is knocked out of the air and into the hands of Zock. Zock has an opening. There's no dodgeballs back. There's no defenders back. There's the ball is oh. off the crossbar, but Zock is able to get the rebound. Taylor Crawford immediately on it. It goes around and into the hands of Riley Andrews and in. So looks like from my perception, that was a good goal that did go through the hoop. Uh, and I did see the refs call that goal good, but I do think there's going to be back contact, but that penalty will be negated by the God, goal. Right there, that's a second card, yeah? Number two, Four yellow seven. card, goal is good, contact from behind. Oh, that's just, oh no, no, it's just one penalty right, for number two. So that is a... Only one, cool. Uh, penalty <laughs> Thank you. for number two, Taylor Crawford on the Warriors um who gets a penalty for back contact time is negated by the goal but they will be off broom um and boom train at 110 and warriors at 105 boom train needs one goal to win uh so warriors really need to bring it uh they need two goals to win still so they're gonna need to score make a stop and then score again yes and also taylor crawford a key player for warriors sitting on two yellow cards now Oh, that's pretty tough for uh, Taylor Crawford, but uh, we're close enough to the end of the game that hopefully uh, well, they just play clean enough. Well, hopefully they will. If they do go out with goal to win, then it will be uh, very difficult for Warriors. But Taylor Crawford looking for an opportunity on the far side. Everyone's getting into their spots. Comes back up to John Jackson at the top. Who does have dodgeball um, protection. That dodgeball... That beater looking to um, hit the other beater with a dodgeball, but isn't quite doing that. They don't want uh, to waste it. They want to be able to do it when it matters um, and when their chasers want them to go in to score. Lindsay Morello's on the far side and passes all the way across to Taylor Crawford. Taylor Easy Crawford, Taylor, to get Taylor in. Crawford, pressured by a beater, uh, goes to John Jackson, who sees an almost no dodgeball scenario, um, but Boom Train does bring that dodgeball back in. Uh, we've got Lindsay Morella at the top with the quad ball uh, and Tay K with the dodgeball, uh, passing back and forth with, with John Jackson at the top. And now Lindsay sees an opening, but is pushed, definitely pushed from behind. Uh, looks like it was There is pulled. definitely pushed from behind is Lindsay Morella there. There has to be a call on that. And instead, Lindsay Morella gets the unsportsperson-like conduct blue card. My guess is that's a blue card for making ball. referee no calls, unfortunately. And I can't have a shot uh, that's a really tough time Thank to get you, a card in the game. Referee disrespect, blue cards. Yeah, uh, blue card is. for referee disrespect. Very close. Um, uh, yeah. Very upset right now. Um, hopefully Boom Train can use this opportunity and win. They're going to be very hopeful uh, now that they are mismatched. And one of their key players, Team USA, Lindsay Morella, not in play anymore. All right, so here we are. Goal to win scenario for Boom Train. Riley Anders with the quad ball. Player, uh, Boom Train, one player up. This is the game. Warriors, for the entire defense of their championship, have to make the stop. They don't! There it is! Josh Johnson! We've got to wait on the referees to confirm it. We have to wait on the referees to confirm, but if this goal is good, that is another first-time cl club champion. It so good. is good! It is good! It is the first-time champion, Boom Train. It is the first time of a champion from the middle of the country. It is a litany of firsts right now. Every U.S. Quad Ball National Championship before this one of D1 College, D uh, of D1 College and of club of club throughout the history. D2 College has been won by the West, but D 
uh, D2 college has been won by the West, but D1 college and club have only ever been won by Northeast and Southwest. Finally, the middle of the country, Boone Train, this is what they've been building for, and they finally put their championship up there. Warriors, hard fault, do not get their second championship in a row. Yeah, that was a really tough game for the Warriors. You see a lot of disappointed faces, but uh, so many excited faces from Boom Train. Um, and it looks like the crowd uh, is very excited for them as well. This game what came down to the wire again as well. Uh, with this, uh, with the score, with Warriors only two goals away from winning, with Boom Train coming down from being behind by so much. Just an amazing game and just an amazing call. Thank you so much for working with me on this game and all weekend. Anything else that you want to say to everyone out there in quad ball land? Thank you for watching. This was such a nail biter and I'm so excited to see what happens in U.S. quad ball. So that is going to be a wrap on the games here from U.S. Quad Ball Cup 2024 in Round Rock, Texas. We will see you next year for U.S. Quad Ball Cup. 2025 and maybe we'll be back for a player interview if we can and we did that um uh, yes maybe we will back, be back next year uh we will be back next year but until then i have been clay dockery and i'm Soleil Heaney. and this is us signing off
All right, I am Clay Dockery, and I am back with Kennedy Murphy. How does it feel to get that Boone Train Championship? It's very surreal. Um, still really hard to believe. Uh, I think we've just slowly built up throughout the past couple of seasons. Final four for Boom Train last year, second for Chicago Prowl this summer, and now first place. Um, it really is a storybook ending. Um, early in this game, you were down. It was it was fifty to ten, and it was the type of game that the Warriors like to get away from the other team. What did you do on the sidelines to get your team back into this game? Um, before the game, we talked a lot about our heat game um, earlier this tournament where we faced a lot of adversity and fought back to win. Um, we knew we would have to do that in moments with Warriors and Bosnia before. Um, so any moment where we're down, we just remind ourselves that uh, we've always fought back from behind um, and we can make it happen even without a catch. All of your players just put out in spectacular plays out there. J the defense, your beaters, um, and your quad ball players just really, in all phases of the game, um, the, the quick catch was the only part of the game that didn't seem to go your way once it got late. Um, is there anything in particular that your team did in this game that you think was key to the championship? Yeah, we talked a ton about how it's hard for any team to face our set defense. So we made an effort to slow down the game and limit the fast breaks in order to um, perform on our half on defense. And that just naturally leads into stronger offenses. So congratulations to Boone Train, not only your first championship, but for the first championship in either D1 or club at U.S. Quad Ball from outside of the Northeast or the Southwest. How does it feel representing the, your entire part of the country? I think that's the most exciting part. There's a lot of good quad ball players in the mess, Midwest and Great Lakes, and I'm glad that something we've done can help show that and hopefully prove that um, it's more than just us. The teams there are amazing, and so are the players. Thank you so much for your for your uh, all that you've done for quad ball, for the way that you've built this team, and for a great game here today and Boone Train, fantastic club championships. Congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> And that's it from us here at U.S. Quad Ball Championships. Thank you for joining us all day, both days. And please join us again anytime that we're streaming here on YouTube. Until next time, I've been Clay Dockery.